Now let's take some time to talk about manual collision detection in OpenVSP. When we open the Snap2 window, we'll have access to the various parameters, including the target minimum distance and whatever set we want to use. And so I want to start off by showing what happens when we use different sets for collision detection. Let's set this back to the zero distance and choose the inner set. So the inner set is only this inner sphere that's shaded in gray and transparent in our red collision sphere. And so if we come in and say, let's move the small sphere in X and we're gonna decrease. You'll notice that it automatically snaps to that zero distance. We hit it again, it jumps to the next position. Increase, increase, increase. And notice that it's jumping to the next solution very easily, very reliably. And so one thing that we'll go ahead and point out while we're on the subject is that manual collision detection using the increase or decrease buttons tends to be quite a bit more reliable than doing interactive collision detection to where you hold the alt key and you drag the sliders around. And now if we go back to talk about sets a little bit more, let's choose this outer set. And so what you'll notice is the outer set here is going to ignore this inner sphere completely. So if I go ahead and decrease our X position now, it's jumping to this position. I can decrease again. Notice that it's jumping all the way outside this sphere, and that's the last position that we can get. We try and decrease it anymore. It's only increasing the distance, so there is no solution. And of course, we can go back the other way, and it skips past this entire inner sphere. Just because it's shown, it's ignoring it completely because it's not in the set. But let's look at what happens if we choose shown. So now all three of these are present. Let's go ahead and bring this back to, say, our middle position of 1.5. And instead of moving the red sphere around, let's look at what happens if we set this to, say, 0.25. And let's start manipulating this inner sphere here. And so what will happen if we drag, say, the Z location of this large sphere and increase it? Now we have 0.25 between this sphere and this one. And so that was the target minimum distance between all of these components. And watch what happens if we increase again. That sphere jumped all the way outside. And you might wonder, well, you know, why did that happen? Shouldn't it have gone somewhere in the middle? No, because if we bring our Z location down and say, well, what if we tried to hit 0.25 between these two? There is a zero distance here. These two are intersecting. That is not a solution. If we came down a little bit more and tried to say, well, why didn't it pick 0.25 from here to here? Same reason. There is an intersection between these two components, and that is not a solution. So it's not that Snap2 was making any assumptions. It did exactly what you told it to do and said to find the target minimum distance solution. That happens to be outside this model. So if we decrease it, it's going to jump inside. We do it again. It comes to the next one, do it again, it jumps all the way out. So again, manual collision detection is very reliable and it will do exactly what you told it to do, even when perhaps your assumptions on what it should be doing are wrong. So Snap2 is not only a clever way of positioning components inside your model, it's not just a way of finding out where you think the collision should or shouldn't happen. Sometimes it will tell you whether or not your assumptions about where it should or shouldn't hit are incorrect. And so it's a really useful, versatile tool for investigating your model.